Hello, and welcome to Eye on New Pulse. I'm Josina Campbell. And I'm Emma Phillips. Here are today's top stories. In international news, drug kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was found at 7 a.m. last Saturday. He was known as the most wanted man in the world for some time executing Hollywood-esque crimes. For example, this past February, one of his senior officers was arrested for being found with 4,000 hollowed-out cucumbers and bananas filled with cocaine. Federal prosecutors across the United States are already jockeying over who will handle the case, even though it's far from clear whether he'll ever be brought to this country to face charges. Two days before he fled Ukraine's capital, President Viktor Yanukovych huddled on the phone for more than an hour with Vice President Joe Biden, his primary conduit with the U.S. government throughout the political crisis consuming the former Soviet Republic. A senior administration official familiar with the conversation says Biden warned Yanukovych that the window for a resolution to the crisis was quickly closing and may have already closed. Suspected Islamic militants killed dozens of students in a pre-dawn attack on a northeast Nigerian college, survivors say, setting ablaze a locked hostel and shooting and slitting the throats of those who escaped through windows. Some were burned alive. Adam Garba said he and other teachers estimate 40 students died in the assault that began around 2 a.m. Tuesday at the federal government college Buniyadi. In national news, the consumer advocacy group Public Citizen wants the Food and Drug Administration to add a bold warning label to popular testosterone drugs for men. Two recent studies show higher rates of cardiovascular problems in men who use testosterone medications like the blockbuster testosterone gel Androgel. A Veterans Affairs study published three months ago showed a 30% increase in stroke, heart attack, and death among older men taking testosterone. Democrat John Dingell announced this week that he is retiring after nearly 60 years in the House of Representatives. He's the longest serving member of Congress in history. Dingell has served in the U.S. House since winning his late father's seat in 1955. Dingell, who is 87, says his 60-year-old wife will have his vote if she decides to run, which she just may. Taco Bell is readying for the launch of its national breakfast menu on March 27th, with items such as the AM Crunch Wrap designed to appeal to its fan base of younger men. And the chain says breakfast will be available until 11 a.m., and half an hour longer than McDonald's offers its egg McMuffins. Stay tuned for entertainment news. I'm Dominique DiBartolo. This week in entertainment news. The monologue jokes were mostly thin and the host seemed stiff delivering them. Soon enough, Seth Meyers seemed to gain control of his inaugural edition of Late Night. AP television writer Fraser Moore reports that the comic suffered a few opening night butterflies, then found his stride as the show went on. But can Jimmy Fallon be replaced? We'll have to wait and see. Amanda Bynes has pleaded no contest to alcohol-related reckless driving after she clipped a Los Angeles County Sheriff's patrol car. District Attorney Spokeswoman Jane Robinson says Bynes entered the plea Monday through her lawyer. The actress was sentenced to three years of probation and three months of attending alcohol education classes. The Bachelor finale was this week, and while we hope Juan Pablo Galavis has found love, we're waiting to find out who the next Bachelorette will be. E! Online has revealed it is one of the top four girls on Galavis' season. Stay tuned for sports news. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. I'm Jeff Harris. Here's your sports news for this week. An NFL-ordered investigation found Jonathan Martin was subjected to a pattern of harassment that included racist slurs and vicious sexual taunts about his mother and sister by three Miami Dolphin teammates. The report said Richie Incognito, who the Dolphins suspended in November, was harassed by offensive lineman John Jerry and Mike Pouncey, as well as another offensive lineman and an assistant trainer. New York Knicks point guard Raymond Felton has been arrested on three counts of criminal possession of a weapon. Felton turned himself in at 12.50 a.m. Tuesday, shortly after the Knicks lost to the Dallas Mavericks at home. 
Felton was expected to be arranged on charges of criminal possession of a weapon in the second, third, and fourth degrees. Not everybody loves Raymond. The end may be in sight for the NHL players competing in the Olympics. It all began in 1998, when for the first time, players from the world's top professional league took part in the Winter Olympics. For several years, the NHL has been thinking seriously about abandoning the Olympics because several owners are upset about seeing their multi-million dollar investments playing for free and sometimes getting injured while their arenas sit empty for three weeks in February. I'm Emma Phillips. This week in local news, the Career Resource Center held another one of their weekly workshops. This past Wednesday, they discussed how to work on your resume. Let's take a closer look. I'm right outside of the resume workshop where students are coming in to learn how they can make their resume stand out in today's workplace. They're getting the fine tuning that they can make their experiences, their skills, and who they are as a person to really shine through. Where they can find out what resume would suit them the best and how they can find their place in their future work. Now everyone knows the job application process is scary, but this is the kind of workshop that people really need so that they know how to represent themselves in the future. Right now, you need to realize that every skill and every opportunity that you can take is important for the future. Employers want to know what makes you special and what sets you apart. I'm Naya Bonilla. Thank you. Back to you guys. Facebook pages such as New Paltz Crushes and New Paltz Confessions are increasing in popularity. We spoke with SUNY New Paltz students to see if they or anyone they know has been featured on the pages. Let's check it out. Hello everyone. My name is Dominique Bartolo. This week, I got a chance to report on what students think about the infamous and quite controversial Facebook pages, New Paltz Confessions and New Paltz Crushes. Have you ever heard of New Paltz Confessions or New Paltz Crushes and have you used it? I have indeed heard of it. I have both of them on Facebook. Uh, yes, I've heard of it and um, I've used it about twice so far. I check it every now and then though. Yeah, I have both of the pages on Facebook. Has a friend ever told you that you've been written about on New Paltz Crushes or New Paltz Confessions? Yes, my roommate has told me, yes. What did you think about that post? It was funny. Um, I don't know. I feel like people should be more honest and they can say it themselves. I feel, that. I feel like you don't need to have new post crushes to say that. Um, I mean, I'm not sure in particular. I mean, there are a couple instances where I think it could have been me, but I wasn't really quite sure. Uh, I mostly just felt flattered, really. <laughs> but, you know, of course, there's no way of knowing. Do you feel these Facebook pages are in any way benefiting the campus community or are they harming students? I don't think it's either. I think it's just an expression of like things people want to get out there, not in a negative way or a positive way. It really just depends on the person posting. When you have things like that, like you can have bad things written about people, but you can also have like just people who want to make someone's day. I feel like it adds to a level of, of getting to know people. It allows people to be actually honest instead of just sitting there and being, you know, uptight and proper on campus or not necessarily saying it's on their minds. Well, some of them are just annoying, like they keep posting about this one guy at New Paltz Crushes, and I'm sure he's a nice enough person, but I don't really think there are 30 or 40 people on campus fiending for him, so... So it's okay for girls to tease guys by taking their stuff, but God forbid I tease a girl by calling them fat or ugly. What do you think about that? Okay. Um, if a girl's drunken in the bar and takes your hat, it's one thing because she's going to return it and she's being silly and she's actually giving you an opportunity to approach her to get your hat back, to have a conversation, which for some guys might be nice. If you make a comment on a girl's weight that's not teasing them, it's certainly not going to like make them want to talk to you more or open any form or discussion or possible relationship with them. A lot of the pictures in the library are bland and boring. I know a lot of effort was put into them by an artist, but come on, deadpan? All girl kids standing in a parking lot, there's nothing to it. I mean, that's one of those things where, like, like maybe to that person, like, I don't personally think there's anything, like, really special about the photos, but I also haven't taken the time to, like, sit and look at them. Like, I kind of just, like, passed by them, and I was like, all right, like, 
whatever. These are, I guess, different. I don't know. I didn't like take time to like pay attention to them. Like, if it meant something to the photographer, I think that's what matters. Like, a quote that I really like is, "Art is supposed to comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable." So, I don't know. I guess that's an interesting take on it. Okay. My NPC community, I am racist. I do not like African Americans. It is not based on stereotypes or who they really are on the inside. I don't know why, but whenever I meet an African American, I just immediately don't like them. I want to fix this because I don't see myself as mean or cruel. I am just racist. I want to take a black studies course to fix this, but I am afraid there will be African Americans who I will hate. I am sorry if for any reason you are angered by this post. I just need to get it off my chest and hopefully learn a way to no longer be a racist. What do you think of that? Uh, I think we happen to live in the country known as the United States of America, and uh, part of living in this country, you're afforded the rights to think and say whatever you think, or whatever you feel. The, that gentleman, yeah, he can be a racist, he's allowed to be a racist. He's just allowed to tell you as well. He's allowed to stand on the mountaintop with as big a speaker as he wants to say, I don't like black people. I may disagree with him, however, I have no right to tell him not to say what he has to say. So. On one sense, I disagree because I personally don't feel that way. On another sense, he has every right to have his own opinion, and if that's a part of it, then he's, he's totally fine by me. So according to the students I have interviewed, they do find the pages sometimes offensive, but they do believe it is a form of freedom of expression and freedom of speech, and the pages should not be taken down. I'm Dominique DiBartolo. Thanks for watching. That's all for this week. I'm Josina Campbell. And I'm Emma Phillips. Thanks for tuning in.